Hey guys, Turtle Girl here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about lighting and heating for turtles. So lighting and heating are an essential part to keeping your turtles healthy and that is because normally they would live in the wild and they have the sun to give them lighting and heat and that does um, a couple things for them. First of all, um, the sun produces UVB light which is a specific wavelength and what that does is it helps the turtle to digest certain foods and certain um, vitamins. And then the heat just helps with overall shell health, growth, and the light overall just help them set their internal clock, they know when to wake up. So it's really important to get heating and lighting right with turtles. So first let's talk about lighting inside the actual aquarium. So in all honesty, as long as you have a light that is putting out some form of brightness in the t into the tank, your turtle won't care. It just wants light in the tank when it's daytime and no light when it's nighttime. So you can use LED lights, you can use T5 or T8 bulbs, or you can use those just standard aquarium light bulbs to light up your aquarium. It doesn't really matter. If you have plants or something, then you might want to do more research into that. But for turtles, as long as you have some form of light in there during the daytime, that will work. How long do you want these lights on in the tank? Um, typically you want a photo period, which is basically a fancy term for how long you want the lights on. You want them on for between 14 to 10 hours. And this just depends sometimes on the time of year and kind of just how you feel that you want to do it. Between 14 and 10 hours is just the general guideline. And some, I just want to say this for all lights and also your basking area lights, which also includes your heat bulbs definitely get a timer. Timers help so much with consistency. You don't have to worry about flipping that on and off switch every day and if you forget then it won't harm anything. So definitely invest in a timer. Literally you can just go to Walmart, get one of those simple analog timers, spend eight dollars. It'll make your life that much easier because you just set it and forget it. So a timer is definitely something you should invest in. So now let's talk about basking lighting and basking heating. So with basking lights, you need two different types. You will need a heat bulb that produces warmth and a UVB bulb that make those rays that help with digestion and such. And without heat in UVB, certain problems will arise such as metabolic bone disease, soft shell, shell rot. So it's really important to have both heat and UVB for your turtle to keep them healthy. So first thing with UVB bulbs that you need to know, you want to make sure on the box that has the bulb in it, you want to make sure that it explicitly says that this bulb produces UVB wavelength light. And this is because there is other UV light that you can get. There's like UVA, but that is not the same wavelength as UVB. And it's kind of complicated. I'm not going to go into that. But basically, UVB is the specific wavelength that allows your turtle to have a nice shell and that allows them to digest those minerals. So you want to make sure it is UVB wavelength light. Okay, don't forget that. The two most common ways to provide UVB are through compact UVB bulbs and tube UVB bulbs. So with compact UVB bulbs, they're usually pretty cheap and easy to find, but sometimes in the past, they have been known to cause photokeratoconjunctivitis. And basically what this is is an eye problem caused by too much UVB coming into the eyes of your animal. But recently, I haven't heard of any um, cases of this, so usually you will be fine. It's just something to keep in mind if you are considering using a compact UV bulb. Now, you really don't have to worry, but I'm just putting that out there so that you know that that is a slim chance that that could happen. And then there are tube UVB bulbs. So tube UVB bulbs are um, a little bit more expensive. Um, and they usually fit in a standard aquarium hood, and they are very safe, tried and true, pretty much what a lot of people recommend. But the only thing with these is actually, I'm not sure how they would work with a above tank basking area, 
because I mean if you're above tank basking areas in a separate area above your tank then maybe you'd have to get I don't know a smaller fixture to put over that so that's why usually I would just recommend a compact bulb but tubes work great as well either way you're still giving your animal UVB one thing to know with UVB bulbs is that after a certain time period they stop producing the UVB wavelength of light so you usually have to replace your UVB bulbs between six to nine months now most of the time on the packages of the um, bulbs they'll say that you should replace them after a year however between the time of six and 12 months that UVB output really decreases so it's a good practice to replace your UVB bulbs because unless you get an expensive UV meter that tells you what the output of the UV is then you don't really know when the bulb stops producing UVB because the visual light will still be there but you have to replace them. So now let's talk about heating. So first let's talk about our heating basking bulbs. So with heating for your basking area pretty much any bulb that produces heat will work. You can use incandescents, you can use halogens, you can use specifically marketed reptile heat bulbs. Doesn't really matter as long as the bulb is heating up the basking area to the temperature you want it. You want the temperature of the basking area to be about 10 degrees warmer than the temperature of your water. That's usually in between 85 to 90 ish degrees and I wouldn't go any lower than 82 and no higher than 93 ish and so that is the temperature you want your basking area at and you can always um, move your fixture closer and further away to get the heat just right and you can test your heat um, it doesn't have to just be an analog thermometer in fact those aren't always as accurate as they could be but what i like to use for measuring temperature is a infrared laser temperature gun and there will be links to those in the description and those are super awesome because it's kind of like point and shoot and then it tells you like the very precise temperature of what the basking area is and then plus it has a cool laser on it and it's kind of fun to play with, I don't know, your cat or your dog with it. I mean, even my fish kind of chase around the laser if I point in the aquarium. Now, you just have to be careful with lasers as always. You don't want to put that in your eye. You'll break it. You'll break your eyeball. But the laser is kind of fun to play with. And those are just really great for reading temperatures. And that will just read the surface temperature. So I really like those infrared laser temperature guns. And then there are certain bulbs that do produce both heat and UVB and these are namely mercury vapor bulbs and these are a good idea in theory because you can have one fixture with a bulb that produces both your heat and UVB but there are several downsides to them. First of all they are pretty expensive and I mean, most of them run between 50 to $100. And then you have to keep in mind that you ought to be replacing these every six to nine months. And then they actually have been known to explode and um, actually break. And that can be really dangerous. So because of these reasons, as great as it would be to have a bulb that just did an all-in-one, they don't always work that well, so usually um, it's best to stick to two separate bulbs for heat and UVB. Now let's talk about heating in tank. So for heating in tank, um, any standard glass aquarium heater will work. And the size of heater for your tank, usually you want about 2 to 3 watts of energy um, times the amount of gallons in your tank. And you can just quickly Google how big of a heater for my x gallon tank and that's a really quick way to find it out and then for the temperature of the water that you will be setting the heater at is it depends on two things so it depends on the age of the turtle and then the species of the turtle and so for babies you want to usually keep the water between 78 and 80 degrees and you have to remember that turtles are reptiles so they do regulate their body, temp body temperature based on the temperatures around them so it's important to get your heating right. So for babies, about 78 to 80 degrees is a good range. Um, juveniles, about 75 to 78. And for adults, they can go as low as 68, 70-ish degrees. 
and because their metabolism is also not as high as that of a growing turtle so they are usually um, fine with cooler temperatures so what I do with my cold tolerant species and that is currently Nemo my eastern painted turtle is I just set my heater at 70 and it will kick in when I need to and as far as how much the species of turtle plays into it basically you just have to do your research. Most of the turtles that are commonly available, like slider turtles and painted turtles, usually come from pretty cold tolerant areas. But you just need to do your research, find out what area that turtle usually comes from in the wild. So a turtle from the east coast is more likely to be tolerant of cold weather than say perhaps a turtle from the south. And it can kind of vary species to species, but generally Baby turtles, the hatchlings, prefer their water warmer. The juveniles can go a little bit lower than that. And then adults are usually pretty cold tolerant and is usually what will work. So yeah, that's pretty much all there is for heating and lighting. But it is a really important thing to know about because it is vital to the health of your turtle. So if you learned something from this video, please leave a huge thumbs up. Comment below if you have any tips for heating and lighting. Or if you just have some questions, I'd be happy to answer those for you below. Um, if you like the content I'm producing, please consider checking me out on Patreon if you want to support me. That really helps so much. Shout out to all my patrons. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for your support. Um, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you guys next Friday. Have a totally awesome day. Bye!